Desde el área de solidaridad tenemos el gusto de compartir que desde el trabajo que hacemos en gestión de proyectos y recaudación de fondos, en este caso en articulación con FMCI, hemos recibido la visita de Margot Sullivan, consultora de Misancar, organismo donante del Instituto. Dado que nuestros proyectos Corazón Sin Fronteras Maicao y Corazón Sin Fronteras Santa Fe fueron seleccionados junto con otros cinco proyectos del mundo para la sistematización de buenas prácticas educativas dirigidas a personas en contexto de movilidad humana. Margot, bienvenida a los canales comunicativos de la provincia norandina. ¿Cuál es la misión de Mission Cara en el mundo? Mission Cara es una organización and they work with uh, missionaries, uh, Irish missionary organizations in 50 countries around the world. I think there's around 88 Irish missionaries, mostly Catholic and some uh, Protestant. And they want to work with the most vulnerable. Their biggest programs are in education, livelihoods, health, and then climate resilience. Hablemos acerca de tu trayectoria en el campo social y educativo. ¿En dónde has trabajado? ¿Cómo ha sido esa experiencia a lo largo de los años? I'm an educator through and through. I started my career as a primary teacher in Ireland. Um, and my interest in development came when I went to work as a volunteer teacher in Nigeria for two years. Um, I can tell you, you, you'll be hearing my age now, but that was in 19... When was that like? 1991. <laughs> um, but since then I have gone on to work with um, NGOs, Um, with universities at home as well um, and I have lived and worked in 13 countries but mostly in Africa so for example I was eight years in Uganda three years in Namibia and two years in Nigeria um, and since then I've also managed a lot of programs so then I started to work with um, with the UNICEF And so I was their chief of education in UNICEF Uganda for five years and in UNICEF China for five years. So I managed very large programs there. But my interest has always been in, in the area of education and in the most vulnerable as well. And have worked a lot with, with refugees and with migrant populations. So. Miss Yankara is one of the principal donors for the projects that we have in Colombia. Principally, what is the objective of the visit to this country? So the main, because education is one of the largest programs for Mission Cara, um, every year uh, Mission Cara commissions a, a study um, and it's to highlight particular areas of work. So Mission Cara is funded by the Irish government, by taxpayers' funding. And so Irish aid would fund them. And so this, the purpose of every year, so this mission this year is to, um, they picked, Mission Cara picked five countries where they believe there's very valuable work being done to support migrants. So specifically, we want to look at what are the best practices in different contexts, um, what are the challenges, um, and then so that we compile them together so that they can, the different countries can share not just the five countries, but all of the, um, the, the 50 countries where Mission Car works. Durante la visita a las obras sociales Corazón Sin Fronteras en Maicao, y Santa Fe en Bogotá, ¿cuáles han sido esas prácticas sociales y educativas que más te han llamado la atención? The centers provide, like it was really for me very impactful. Um, I was near to tears many times um, because I saw the living conditions and then I'm seeing what the, the project does for the children. Um, you, you see these children with terrible life conditions and then they're being children, they're smiling, they're happy. There was no fear. Um, I was also very, that's why I know that the teachers are doing their work well, that the children were very confident. There was no aggression. Um, and especially in uh, here in Santa Fe, the children come from backgrounds where there would be a lot of aggression, a lot of violence. And the fact that, and the teachers were telling me that when they came first, they had to do a lot of work with them to help them to how to communicate, how to get on with other people, even saying please and thank you and taking turns. Teniendo en cuenta tu experiencia global, ¿cómo evalúas las estrategias aplicadas, implementadas en Colombia en las obras sociales en comparación a otros contextos en el mundo los cuales has conocido? The, the context of both projects were amongst the worst I have seen and I have 
worked with a, and, and been in a lot of uh, refugee communities, especially La Pista. No, I was shocked, like they have no public services, no water, no sewage, nothing. And then this morning when we walked through here in um, Santa Fe, um, extraordinarily difficult conditions. The, the people have to live and pay by the day, 10 to 15 in a room, maybe there's five or 10 families sharing a bathroom. Even this morning when we were walking through, a lot of the women are prostituted. Um, there was all prostitutes on the street. Um, so very, very um, difficult conditions. But then when I went into the Hearts Without Borders, it was, like it, it's actually one of the best, if not the best projects that I have seen in light of the small amount of funding that they are, are getting. So having worked for bigger organizations and seeing how much money some projects use, the, what, what the brothers and what's happening in Norandina province is significant value for money um, with, with small amounts of money. Um, I just saw so much good happening. The teachers are brilliant, the schools are so organized. There's everything there for the, the children's need. And it all goes back to values and love and keep saying love. I was just um, really amazed. And I'm going to talk more with Brother Juan Pablo about the uh, Maris pedagogy. <laughs> ¿Qué aspectos en Maicao y Santa Fe en Bogotá más te han impactado respecto a las condiciones de vulnerabilidad en las que viven esta población? Conditions were so difficult, so terrible. Like my humanity was completely touched. I wanted to reach out and, and help all of the people. I couldn't believe the conditions they're living in. Um, in just this morning, um, I think we were the, some of the parents came and um, one of the parents, she's YU. And I think because we asked her something about her daughter and she started crying. And the, she shared the story of her daughter and how she's speaking now. She's 11 in the project, um, but she didn't speak for a year because I think when she was nine or like two years ago, they were traveling in, they were um, attacked, I guess, and the daughter was violated and that we were just completely shocked. But then the mother highlighted that the daughter is actually speaking here. She has friends, she has hopes, she wants to be a doctor. And the other, say in my cow, then the human thing, when we went, we visited families and um, there was one mother and she was, as a mother, um, she, was, she had four children, she was on her own. She was at breaking point, you could see. There was tears near to her eyes. So she has to work. Um, their conditions were atrocious, like they have no running water, nothing. So she has to leave the house at 5.30. She's not back until 10. So only for the project, she was saying, at least she knows then after school, they will be safe and not get into trouble. Um, but just to see her struggle, was uh, really impactful. But what really helped, and to look at it in a positive note, they have hope for the future. And Because I was trying to figure out why she would leave Venezuela to, to come and live in those conditions. And she highlighted, at least here, I can get some money and I can my children have food. So for me to hear that was um, overwhelming. Desde tu perspectiva, ¿cuáles consideras que son esas barreras a las que más se enfrenta esta población en lo que se refiere a la integración a nuevos lugares y adaptarse a los nuevos contextos. I guess what what was mentioned to me like a number of times is the documentation. Um, but I believe now that they get the documents a little bit quicker, I think five or six months. But even if they have documentation and then the children can access the schools, what came up a lot is that especially the Venezuelan children, they struggle a lot in the schools in Colombia. Um, they were explaining as something around differences of um, subjects, but also that they face xenophobic attacks in school. Uh, the children, their, their confidence is shattered by that. That is a huge challenge. I don't know how how, how you do that, but a lot of the children then they they don't speak. Their confidence is is gone, um, and this is what the project probably helps them to do. And that's why they they explain to me. Um, Fabrizio and Diana, they do a lot of arts, um, drama, something so they can express their own cultures and everything else. Um, I think the rest for integration really, it is, it is down to the, the, the government here and to try and maybe get their papers more, more quickly. ¿Cómo ves el papel de Misión Cara y otras organizaciones internacionales en el apoyo a estos proyectos sociales, a estas estrategias en Colombia? 
you, you absolutely need the support of Mission Cara and other organizations uh, because the need is so great. And um, so you need additional financial resources and also, I guess, what technical expertise we can bring. Like both projects that I, that I have seen, you can see I'm very impacted by them. There's like in uh, my cow, there's four and a half thousand children uh, and living with in those conditions. And with the resources available, we can only help so many. So if not, if we're really to try and get further funding, because you have a model that works, it's proven. So my cow, I think, is there since 2018, like, or four, maybe four years old. So the, you, the model is proven. So now is to get funding so you can roll it out elsewhere. And now it's in, so you have it proven in very remote area like my cow, and also in an inner city, very um, difficult uh, situations. So, yeah. Margot, muchas gracias. También el agradecimiento para Mi Shankara, para FMCI, por esta experiencia para la provincia de Norandina. Y a todos ustedes, estimados amigos de los canales comunicativos de fmsonor.org, Maristas Provincia de Norandina, no olviden seguirnos a través de todas nuestras redes sociales y de nuestro canal en WhatsApp. Hasta pronto.